defense to choose to go server, which is one of pretty much everybody's base sites. He can actually just deny so many rotates from the hatches with his fire arrows. And not only that, he brings the smokes, which can block a lot of different sight lines. So the Capital ban is definitely a pretty powerful ban. And then we're going to see Habana and Echo off the board. Not too surprised there. It's going to force the attackers to bring both a Thermite and a Maverick to make sure both the walls and hatches that need to be open for their attacks on basement get open. And we're going into this last and final defense ban of map number one. We're going to see the Mira. Also not too surprised there. I would say three out of four of these bans are pretty standard. The Capital, it, it's definitely, he's a highly banned operator, but you don't see him banned on bank too much. At not least as not as to often my as Jackal. Not exact, as often as yes. Jackal because of how big the map is and how important it is to do the roam clearing. Um, Jackal is going to be brought, I'm assuming, 100% of the time on bank because he is so powerful to try and find the roamers out. And, of course, he was, in, he was, I think, the first operator picked by any team as England will pick him up. Looks like the Pulse getting swapped out for the dock. No surprises elsewhere. As a matter, as a matter of fact, now that the bands are done, I don't see any surprises here with the operator picks. Yeah. You see Brainbow six thing from the pulse to the dock that more than likely may be trying to throw Rise off, making them think they're going basement, but you are going to see Disrupt elect to go for that CEO hold on the second floor. I love the Mozzie pick. This is a very, very drone heavy map. You have to be very, very careful with your drones, and you have to make sure that you drone just about every single corner. Mozzie really stalling that time. We talked about it last week in many of our matches, how not only can he deny drones routes and, and stall them, but he can hack drones and turn it into that information for the defender side. Ten seconds left. Yes, indeed. And so Spades, he will knock out a little bit of this square door. Thinking perhaps he was going to throw a camera out, but he will decide to pull back. And I'm going to tell you something about attack here and the operators that are brought. I do not think with the exception of Sledge, we will see much difference in the lineup being brought out from either one of these teams. I'm, I, I'm, I would be very surprised if we didn't see two hard breaches, a Jackal, and a Thatcher. And here comes one of the EMPs up to the window as the Rise Nation makes their approach on the edge of the building. They'll decide now that CEO is the site to attack, that Top Square will be their target for the time being. Yeah, you're actually going to see England looking around for that Valk cam. They probably realize that they have a Valk. Couldn't actually tell if Valk even threw a cam out. May have just been kind of a bait. But we're going to see them on the repels. This site is very, very repel heavy for the attacker side. Most of the time when you see teams going for a square, t a square take, which looks like Rise has elected to do, you're going to see at least one or two players on that north repel to apply the pressure on the players playing inside CEO so that the walls can get opened by the Thermite or the Maverick much easier. You are gonna see Brainbow in the back with the ACOG pretty standard. Once the wall gets open, you'll probably see him kind of aggressively aggressively peeking with that MP5 ACOG. A minute and 20 off the board, Rise getting the control and the drones of, you know, they're just, just the drone sight lines of everything that they need. You see Yeti roaming. He's definitely going to try to apply that pressure on Rise as they start to enter the building. Yeah, so windows getting open. Rainbow is playing peekaboo with said windows. We'll look away drill just as Sledge is actually kind of a little bit exposed, opening the window with Journey's End. But uh, for now, everybody nice and healthy. We'll see Doc overheal just a little bit, ready to engage. There's still so much time for the attackers that uh, really, I guess it is a time for the action to get started. But of course, as soon as I say that, Adam, will take down Spage, so there will be one less on the side of DG. Valkyrie getting taken down, all her cameras being deployed already though. So a good start from then. A lot of roaming going on downstairs, but because the action of the CEO wall is now underway, Beasley will go for default spot. You usually see somebody actually impact that uh, cabinet out of the way, but a flurry of kills will find two and two on either side. It's a 3v2 now, 36 seconds left. The attackers will have time to kind of reconvene and uh, make a move again for the site. Now that they have the person count, 25 seconds left and a lot of nothing happening right now. They're just gonna have to make sure that when it's time to push into site to try and go for that defuse once again, 
that they're going to be nice and safe. If they wait too long, though, then it doesn't matter who's alive. As long as the defense can stop that that diffuser going down, that's all she'll need. Acid and Yeti will find one each. It's a 2v1. Yeti on the Jaeger with a smidge of health will get taken down as Acid with a two-piece. We'll close it out, winning round number one, Rise Nation. That was really well played by Rise. I actually like, you saw the Thermite run in, right? Yeah, so the smokes came out. You saw the Thermite run in. Almost looked like he was going to plant. However, a flurry of trades went down, like you said, and they had the man advantage and the time on their side. So you saw him elect to back out to square, wait for his teammates to regroup, and then push as a team. And then you saw Acid was or not acid, you saw somebody on the side of Disrupt fall, left Yeti in a 1v2, much more winnable situation for the side of Rise. When you're in a 2v1, time's ticking down, the bomb is going down, and then you have acid, who's able to just pick up that kill onto Yeti. Need to yeah, them. acid and Yeti, I think ex-teammates on the Pro League team Orgless back yeah, in season were... eight. Back in season eight. Yep, they were on so... Noble together with, I believe it was Breezy, Crazy, and heavy crazy yeah i think you're absolutely right i think you're absolutely right <clears throat> i think they ended up being orgless by the time pro league rolled around but anyway that's besides the point they found new homes now acid getting uh, the better of it as far as we could tell so far but hey we're only one round deep ladies and gentlemen this is first to seven we'll tie if both of these teams get to six rounds apiece rise nation will opt to go to what most will contend to be the preferred site here on bank the basement yeah, we are going to see the Clash pick. I think it's a very interesting pick, especially for this site. I'm interested to see what Spades' plan is. I assume he's going to try to stall as much time here in the server with Rainbow kind of feeding him that information in the server with on the Pulse. I, so I really do like these picks from the side of DG. You have the Pulse providing just so much information with that Cardiac sensor. You have the Valkyrie providing three of those Black Eye cams. And then you have the Maestro, the two bulletproof laser turrets they they brought a lot of information right chris i mean they they just had so much information that rise is going to have to kind of worry about if they elect to go for a plant and there you see yeah. the clash i i had pretty much figured that was the plan there you see the clash in spades holding down the blue stairs probably just going to try to stall as much time as possible so that way the side of rise kind of struggles to get the bomb down in a in a late round scenario yeah, they're going to try and have to do something with the grenades, you know. The sledge, probably as Zofia would have been a little bit more useful here because the stuns can make Clash kind of clam up a little bit and you can get at her legs. So she's going to be annoying, but not a whole lot she could do. And don't forget, there's no ADSs. But with the hatch getting open, in, or getting open and the ability for the attacking squad to rotate down behind her, she will opt to play the smart move and go back towards site. Although I do think she is playing the A door quite closely. Yeah, she's kind of hanging around in that area. So Red Hall will be her target for now as the attackers will take their places in the default area here in server. Yeah, so we're actually going to see Rise get control of server fairly early. This is looking good for the side of Rise. Usually when you're on the attacking side of bank, you want to be in server before the clock hits 45 seconds. And the reason I say 45 seconds is because you have Reed on the smoke, he can stall about 40 to 45 seconds alone with his smoke grenade when you're going for a plan. So when you're on the side of Rise Nation, you want to have that server control early in the round so you can kind of get in and start baiting out all of that utility. You do have three smokes and two nitro cells on the board. So the more time you give yourself when you're in server to bait out all of that utility, it makes it that much Whoa. easier to plan. But you're actually going to see one of the smokes get caught by an EMP. But the Thermite's going to be taken down by Reed. Beautifully tossed smoke by him. You saw him prone in the B site, throwing it over to the Thermite wall and picking up the Thermite. Yeah, but it looks like somebody up in elevators. I'm not sure exactly who it is. Spades is dealing with him, and one of his teammates has come up to help, taking all of that, or those two bodies away from where the, all the action is going down back at site and just like i said acid moves in is able to find two of them we know two of the defenders of the remaining defenders were back on the other side but right back dg will come with a two piece and oh my goodness yeti two with the bailiff at the end are you kidding me did the did you not have enough bullets in the alta how could you have possibly run out either way Fantastic job, and Yeti will somehow 
salvaged that round. It was not looking good. Only one left on site as two were kind of poking at the top of those stairs. Great job by him and great job by DG to win that out. Definitely an interesting series of events, to say the least. It's pretty rare that you see Maestro have to... <laughs> I mean, he's got 81 bullets, Chris. It's a, pretty it's, rare, pretty it's rare pretty to see rare a bailiff two-piece at a Challenger League. <laughs> exactly. But we are going to see Disrupt put their first point on the board now, going into a tie game. Defenders they are going to go back. They are, oh, they are not going back to the second floor. They are going to the Archives Teller's site. Interesting enough i mean most teams seem to make the basement hold and the top floor hold their main two sites maybe because of the way that rise attacked dg realized that they may be more successful on this third off site of theirs they will have to defend two more rounds before their basement hold is up again we are going to see yeti with five kills on the board leading his team already a much better performance if you remember yeti had a pretty poor for performance in that villa at least the first game he played pretty well but that villa you saw him even tweet he was not happy with his own performance so already off to a great start in mat number one of this well, it's been an interesting start that's that's to say um you know it's one a piece right now we've seen both teams do good things we've seen both teams do bad things but right now each round win for each of these teams has been pretty much on the back of a singular player. And so when the rest of the team starts getting involved, that's when we're gonna see somebody start to pull away. When is that gonna happen? Is that gonna happen at all? I have no idea, it's too early to tell, but one apiece, you know, it seems like a pretty even matchup between these two returning teams from CL season nine. Yeah, so, I mean, we're going to see 40 seconds off the board. You're going to see Rise actually already in open. You see England kind of wary of his top floor hatches. You're going to see Spades on the top floor as Smoke. Definitely an interesting place for the Smoke to be holding. You'll probably see Rise try to clear the top floor, and then England is placed in a position to where if the Smoke drops through the hatch that you saw was open in that janitor's closet there, he's going to try to catch him in that rotate. Spades mostly up there, probably need to stall time. I like what I'm seeing from Rise on this repel, but we're actually going to see DG holding upstairs fairly heavily. You have Smoke in the hallway, and you have two in the window room in Maestro and Doc. We'll probably see them get pretty aggressive when Rise starts to make their move. Yeah, Rise seemingly getting held up quite a little bit, just taking the top floor. And uh, they're not getting met by much resistance right now. They've got a lot of barrels going across, and it looks like there is one in Banana. Actually, there's two. Here's the old uh, Thumbus trying to take some pop shots through the window, both in protected positions, and they are just completely sawing out the attack. Here goes a frag grenade, but will it land it? No! And Thumbus will peek out and find the back of Adam. Thankfully, though, there will be Beautiful one downstairs. Shot. That's Acid having a great day so far for the refrag. Four apiece now. Spades taking a lot of damage in the process as well. Mozzie, he'll have some damage on him also. And we'll see number one as Bravebo will remove the head of Vandal. We'll see the first of the... And it looks like, yes, Spades went down. I'm not sure why the doc picked him up. Instead <laughs> of, you know, use that nice little gun he has. Engel will find one. And Thermite Charge is what I was trying to say all along. Yeah, we're going to see them starting to move into sight. 30 seconds left on the board. This is looking pretty good for Rise, but Brainbow is actually going to pick up the Jackal. It is now a 2v3. This is actually looking much better. You're going to see Spades pick up Acid and Yeti with the beautiful C4 onto Beastly. DG picking up round number three, bringing themselves a small lead Ooh. here in mat number one. That yeah, was... I think I think the only reason why that Nitro wasn't a two-piece is because Spades put a bullet in the other operator. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like a half a second before that thing detonated. Listen, I, I'm going to talk about Rainbow for a second. He was the immovable object, which, which is what Doc has to be. Normally, he's a site player. You, you've seen and we've seen, we saw last week in Challenger League, that being kind of, of, kind of a roaming operator, a more aggressive operator. Rainbow has been around a long time. Right, He's an older guy. He has the patience to play an operator like Doc. And when his role with the Doc is to play like Banana upstairs, he's, he's going to just stay there. Right, he, he doesn't need to go anywhere at all. And he didn't. And he picked up two crucial kills for his team, allow, allowing the rest of his team with the numbers advantage to just kind of clean up. 
So good for Brainbow, good for DG. They'll string two together now. And they will take the lead for the first time this match. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> two things real quick. I'm not quite sure why Brainbow picked up his smoke instead of stimming him. That was kind of funny. Second thing is, I I'll just got to give it to him. Acid. <laughs> I just got to give it to Acid. That refrag onto the Maestro was Five insane. Seconds. I don't know if you caught that. It was kind of in an off angle in the, the, the observer mode, but Acid actually picked off the Maestro through the railings from ATMs. It was a beautiful yes. shot. But moving I mean, in right around, in the doorway, right in oh, the doorway. Yeah, too. yeah. it was just it, it was through a sliver. It was a crack. You were gonna see. I mean, like I've been you said earlier, since beta, and I still haven't shot somebody through those railings. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so moving into this round, we are gonna see basically the same operator lineup. You were completely correct, Chris. We're gonna probably see almost the same exact lineup the whole game. Like, we might see maybe one different operator here and there if Rise just thinks that maybe one operator will will help these pushes. But for the most part, we'll definitely see that Jackal. We'll see the Thatcher, the Thermite, and the IQ is is almost a must for these Valk cams on these top floor sites. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, you know, when they know that basement can't be the site, that's the only time you can you can get away with not bringing double hard breach. And so that's why we see the IQ here. Everybody else is the same. So here we go. And a lot of map control really early on for Rise Nation. And I'll tell you what, it's not super difficult to take square because there's not a lot you can do to hold it as a defense. There's just too many window angles, door angles, you know, places where the attackers could be outside to defend it. But Rise wasted absolutely no time in taking it. And Thermite 1 will go out. Vando, he'll find Brainbow, the hero of last round. That'll be Doc and his stems off the board. Not necessarily a death sentence for DG, but to lose him this early on, not great either. The attackers kind of have the site oriented the way that they would like it in order to begin to try and get in and do a diffuser plant. But they haven't had, or they haven't felt safe, rather, enough to do that move. They'll spot one in stocks. But will they be able to take care of him? Some shots go through the wall in that direction. Actually, I believe like I believe that Yeti's down. Yes, and uh, England will, will find one on to Reed. So now a five v two. Some weak attackers here. Adam will find one downstairs at Spades. They know the last one has to be upstairs somewhere. It'll be Thumbus with the Alda five v one. So tall order though. As a minute left to work with for Rise, and nobody saw that. Right? It's still a five v one, and make that a five v zero as Rise Nation will pick up a flawless round and fires right back. I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better round from Rise. I mean, they just got control of what they needed. They got the picks that they needed. The side of DG, I mean, was it over peaking, Chris? I don't know. You saw the Mozzie kind of swing out into England. I believe that was Reed on the Mozzie. He just kind of swung, you know, from the janitor door. I mean, when you're on the side of DG, you just kind of have to know that when you're going to swing on that, that that is going to be watched and it just kind of seemed like they were giving up the free picks rise i mean just just playing it really well the only mistake i saw was vandal misclick his grenade button on the windows yeah and it didn't hurt him or kill him so not <laughs> no. that big of a problem you know if it's a 5v1 that grenade probably not going to be as useful as it is in say a 5v5 situation but here's what Rise, what I really like about Rise is because they wasted no time at all taking what they needed to take in order to like come after the site. That gave, that allotted them the time to be able to hold angles like, like attackers usually aren't able to do on a map this big, right? Usually it's the attackers always advancing, checking their corners, getting intel, always pushing forward and finally kind of breaching into site to try and make a diffuser plan. This time around, they were there so fast and there were so many of the defense, or there's so many members of the defense spread out roaming that the attackers were able to just kind of set up nice, comfortable yeah, angles and not move and catch the defender. Something that we, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time see happen in the uh, in the opposite roles, right? The defense holding the angles and, and Rise executed flawlessly. I mean, they got they had the jump on them when when DG came around the corner on their roams and they won every single gunfight. It was a flawless round. Exactly. And I really got to give it to Adam for how just, I mean, he's an experienced player, right? He's been in pro league. He's been around for a long time, but I just have to give him props for being as patient as he is. You saw him outside of the electrical door, sitting on a drone, waiting, just waiting, waiting, waiting. You saw the Valkyrie try to go for the flank from the kitchen area. 
Adam sees it on a drone, he swings, he gets a beautiful headshot, and just denies the whole flank on the side of DG, right? So, I mean, just huge props to Adam for playing that so patiently and so smart. Now we're moving into round number five. We have, you're gonna see the IQ switched out for the Maverick. Rise probably knew, based off of the operator lineup that DG brought, that they were gonna go back downstairs. So bringing the Maverick was definitely very important. With so many hatches, you kind of need the Maverick to be able to finish open, finish opening them. You really only have two thermite charges to work with, and you're gonna see one go on that server hatch, and then you're gonna see one go on the server wall where the default plant is, and then you're gonna see Maverick opening this hatch in the admin office to apply that pressure in sight. The yep. cave Spades will prime and ready a C4, and the Maverick actually kind of doing a sloppy job up on the hatch. We'll get it open. Here comes the C4. Will it find it smart? No, it will not. No damage done. Acid will actually be in the corner, not where that C4 was thrown. And uh, I missed what happened to Smoke. Actually, he is still fighting for blue stairs. Vandal will chuck in a nade and another, it looks like. The shield will go down. Here comes aid number two. And Smoke will run for his life, but will quick peek around the corner. Oh. Vandal will find two with the SMG 11. And they will heftily dispatch of those trying to hold the stairs. A lot of time was wasted, but two minutes is usually not worth two bodies, especially when one of them smoke. Yeah, I mean, so that's a pretty default strat. I, I mean, it's not something I don't like to see. I mean, it, it's this is just a rise round if I've ever seen one. It's 5v1. But to go back to what I was saying, the smoke holding blue stairs is, is not uncommon, but he needs to be able to stall more time. And it was just Vandal with a beautiful play. I mean, he swung through the grenade. He knew that he could swing off of that, and he was able to get two kills. But we're going to see Brainbow pick up two kills, but ultimately he could not climb that mountain that is Rise Nation. Picking up their third round in this attack half. One more round on the board. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Rainbow did what he could to stop back-to-back -back flawless rounds for Rise, but Rise Nation, despite losing two men at the end, seemed still like flawless rounds. As they didn't seem to have much of a problem with anything back-to-back. -back. And if you're defending on bank, Basement is a must-win site. You gotta win basement. Everything else is up in the air. It's a coin flip, but uh, the historical statistics of basement it just makes it a must-win. You're gonna have a very, very difficult time with the rest of the map, especially if you start on defense, if you cannot win basement. And then if it's after the half and the numbers are close, you know that separates a win from a loss or a tie. So basement, very, very important important to do. DG just really kind of falling apart right now. Some of DG struggling a little bit. Uh, yet he's still sitting atop the pile, but you can see on the side of Rise, you know, the rest of the team who kind of started off slow has now tramped back into play and started doing some work. I would like to see DG go back to what worked best for them. I mean, if we, if we go back a few rounds right to their first basement hold, they won that I wouldn't say necessarily with ease, but they definitely stalled a lot more time for the side of Rise. So I would, I mean, I would like to see them return to that strategy and not have the smoke on blue stairs. But based off of the way that they're holding right now, we, yeah, we, I mean, we might actually see that. It looks like the Jaeger is actually going to be on blue stairs and the smoke will be back in sight. This is exactly what I wanted to see and we're going to see it. And will it pay off? We will find out. We have the same exact operator lineup coming out of both sides actually we're gonna see the valkyrie instead of the cade definitely a, a good pick I, I mean if you're gonna try go for a roam or a flank it, it's very useful to have those cams the side of rise nation does not have that iq to find those cams and as you just saw from spades pov it was a pretty useful cam on the main stairs to try to come up those stairs and apply pressure later on in the round yeah one of kind of the the things that DG hasn't been able to do so successfully is defend those stairs. We saw them waste a lot of time with the Clash, but the Clash was forced to give it up the second that they attacked the hatch. And that sort of strategy wouldn't have worked very well a second time around because they would have known it's the second they open that hatch up, the Clash is gone. They don't have to worry about it anymore. So they had to figure out something different. They tried it last time with the shield and the smoke. They're there again, trying it again. Half the round is gone though, and not a a tinge of damage done to either one of these teams. But when it's time to really start putting pressure on those blue stairs, 
can rise and find as much, much success as they have prior. If so, then this could be another win for Rise, which would make it three in a row. And it looks like they do have full control of server. This time, nobody will be lost in the process for Disrupt, which is huge, but they still will have to stave off the attackers for an entire minute. Yeah, I mean, they have tons of utility. They have the three smokes. They have two nitro cells in the Pulse and in the Valkyrie. They have the Maestro playing in Garage with the long angle to be able to deny that plant, so... If you're Rise Nation, you're going to start baiting out that utility, and then when you finally go for that plant, you you do have to worry about the Maestro holding that long angle. You see him trying to put some shots into the Thermite. Thermite's actually going to take some damage from one of the smoke canisters. 42 seconds on the board still. One smoke gone. This is actually looking pretty good for the side of Rise Nation, but they do need to continue to bait out this utility. That is a second smoke off the board. One left and two nitro cells. We're going to see a smoke come down. We're going to see Yeti actually take a ton of damage through the smoke. We're going to see a nitro cell coming out from spades already pre-ripped so the attackers can't hear it. We're going to see Thumbus move up the main stairs. Three kills for the side of DG. What was looking really good for Rise, not looking so good anymore. England going to be taken down by Reed. It is now a mountain to climb for Vandal in this 1v4, but Disrupt doing what they do best. See, it's exactly what I wanted to see out of Disrupt. They went back to their roots on that site. They played it exactly how they did the first time, and it worked. When they tried to kind of leave that smoke player on the blue stairs, it just it was too easy for Rise to take that control. And we're going to see them close out this half 3-3 three, three. not not too bad probably not what you want on a defender side in map but nonetheless looking pretty good for both sides here evenly matched yeah. up yeah dg that was their best round so far the first time they went basement it was off the back of a yeti 3k at the end too with that bailiff that we talked about this time they were very much in command the entire round they didn't lose anybody on blue stairs they managed to waste half the whole half the round um, before anybody was able to establish any sort of server control control on the attacking squad. And they won their gunfights. Plain and simple, they played it exactly like it needed to be played. The smokes were perfectly on point. Spades somehow survived in Red Hallway, despite a volley of grenades blowing up next to him. I don't know how he survived that, by the way. I thought that second grenade was going to get him. But he somehow survived. And then Thumbus absolutely dominated main stairs at the bottom was able to uh, pick up Adam and, serve, and I guess waste some more time forcing England, I believe it was, at the end to come down and find him. Instant retrade. DG, that was their most commanding round yet. And it stinks to win a round like that and then immediately have to switch sides because it's not as easy to carry the momentum forward, which you you know is very important in this. Look at how Rise and what they did. They were able to chain two together. Uh, the first round being flawless and the, the round right after being almost flawless. Either way, a close game. I think we all expected a close game against, you know, with these two teams playing each other. And uh, that so far, everybody been delivering on that. Exactly. I mean, we have two veteran teams, like we said earlier before the matchup even started. We had a pro league team in season nine of Rise Nation fall down through relegations. And we're going to have a returning Challenger League season nine team in DG. Pretty evenly matched up before... Uh, we pretty much guessed, and now we're we're seeing exactly what we thought. Now, 50 seconds off the clock. Real quick, real quick, I just want to shout out to our producer, Blonde Bond, who put together an awesome-looking round count so we can see exactly how the rounds have played out so far. There it is on your screen right now. Awesome job, sir. And uh, just like we already knew, the half finishing at three apiece. Sorry to cut you off there. Also, real quick shout-out before I kick it back to you to Keg Lunnick. Yes, I said it right. Somebody <laughs> buy me a cookie. George is ready. Our beautiful observer for the evening. Big shout outs to them. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. So huge shout outs because I mean, everybody just wants to see these North American Challenger League matches. So here they are bringing them to you. A minute and 25 seconds left on the clock. This is looking good for the side of DG. Actually, they've stalled quite a bit of time. If, or uh, Sorry, Rise Nation, excuse me. If you're DG, you really want to start moving oh. up, but that, that is the smoke off the board. That is such a huge pick. Vandal getting caught with his pants down almost. He had the smoke canister in hand when the sledge peaked. That's, that's a really huge pick for the side of DG. That was a sick peek by Yeti, and boy, did it pay off. He was down. I think I had heard some shotgun shots going off, and then I believe 
Vandal got caught trying to reload that shotgun, so panic through a smoke. And just like that, it was all over. It's going to be very, very difficult for the defense to win this round. But time is on their side. Only 40 seconds left. They're going to have to make a move quick. But that wall will get open. And Acid on that long angle will one-tap Thumbus into the nether realm. So it's an even man count. Still only 30 seconds to go. He still has that really nice angle, too. And now, just like that, I think the defense is actually in a great position. Sure, they don't have any smokes, but just as you heard it, a C4 will get ripped, primed, and ready to go. The diffuser will get baited out, and as well, the nitro cell will see Acid firing single bullets through here. But no! Oh, from Garage, Reed wraps around. Spades will find one. The C4 will stop the plant with a two-piece, but Reed, he'll find one, and that makes a two for him as well. Spades will peek in, find one in gold, but not be able to finish him off. And Rise will hang on by a thread off the back of that unbelievably well-timed Nitro two-piece. Rise Nation will win round number seven, their first defense. I mean, that was looking like a, a, a DJ round to me. I mean, they got the smoke off the board when there was a minute and 10 seconds left. That is just a huge pick. And it... I mean, you saw Acid get the one tap onto the Thatcher with that long angle. I mean, Acid was just doing so much damage. You saw him kill the Thatcher. You saw him do a, about 75 damage to the Thermite, but he was caught off guard by the player flanking main stairs. And then from being defused by the, the veteran player. I mean, you just saw Beastly really close it out for his team. I mean, Rise snuck away with that round beastly you saw him run away with about six seconds left on the clock when he was in a 1v2 versus the zofia and the maverick and he's in vault the Zo zofia rushes in zofia is trying to gun him down but you see beastly kind of giving him the one two kangaroo and the movement he's able to hide behind the vault and close out the round with his life just a beautiful play coming out from beastly one two kangaroo <laughs> yes sir is that a song where, where does that come from or is that just because it rhymed uh it's actually an old halo term if you, i mean if you don't know who i am i used to play halo professional uh, professionally and it, it's just it's just something that's always been said in the halo universe chris puckett a huge inspiration of mine and many others in the casting universe one of his most ma famous phrases back in my day it was one two buckle my shoe but that's besides the point. Here we go, round number eight. Rise Nation finding their first win on what, of course, I just described as a must-win defense, and that is in the basement. Disrupt Gaming now attacking the upstairs. They know about it. They're making some moves, gathering some intel. They're not as quick to take in to the top of Square as we saw Rise when they found a successful attack up top. That was the flawless round that we saw out of Rise Nation. But, uh, you know, DG has their own little strategy right here. And I'm seeing this trend of cameras and, oh, no, a terrible spot from England will get caught out by Yeti. Just terrible timing on that, really. But a little bit of aggression coming up as he goes all the way to that window. I mean, there's no escape from that spot. Once you punch the window to look out, you're, you're pretty much going to have to commit to whatever you're going to do. But he didn't even get the chance as Yeti pre-fires the window space. We'll find one on to Adam. That's the Valk and... The Jaeger gone, all their utility being deployed already. However, those are some pretty good guns to have in the hands of your teammates. Exactly. I mean, DG getting some really good picks, and they've got control of pretty much everything they need. We're going to see Acid get one pick, but he's going to immediately be refragged by the Claymore. So that is just a trade IQ off the board. That's It's a pretty solid pick, especially since the Valkyrie cams are on the board however this is looking like a mountain to climb for the rise nation just kind of getting early picked you saw the jaeger in open just just get spammed through the window this is definitely looking like a dg round however you still have two veteran players in vandal and beastly on the board so anything is possible we saw them clutch out a 2v4 last week on consulate versus shrug so can they do it again you're going to see a really long angle coming out for Vandal. Some shots going down, but not going to connect. The players on DG starting to make a move. They do still have time on their side. Vandal going to get one pick on to Reed. Now a very, very winnable situation. 2v3. You're going to see Yeti moving into the breach hole. Rainbow taking down the dock. It is now a 1v3 for Beastly. If anybody can do it, it's Beastly. But he is taken down. Not able to reiterate the 1v3 he won last week. Great job by 
spades there to wrap around and cover that diffuser from a different angle. And Disrupt will win pretty heftily up top. I mean, they had they were having a decent enough time after taking the smoke out on the stairs the round before. But uh, Yeti will kick it off with that lucky kill. You know, just a good timing kill onto England. And uh, the rest just kind of fell like dominoes. So well played from DG. And here we are, tied up yet again, four rounds apiece. Don't forget, folks, that in Challenger League, it is very tieable, right? If both teams get to 6-6, six, six, then only one point will be awarded for each of these teams. The points being so, so important. You attack. know that both of these teams are going for the W. And here is an interesting spot. And I'll tell you what, you don't see this spot defended very much at higher tiers. But I love this spot. I think that this has viability. Number one is because, you know, a lot of these teams don't actually practice attacking this spot quite often, this open area. But at the same time, I think that if you know what you're doing, you know your angles, and your roam game is good enough, because defending up top is pretty important here. And you'll see castles come up top um, and some other utility as well. Defending up top is very important for the successful defense of open area. So I'm curious to see exactly what they have in store, but uh, this could catch DG completely off guard. So if DG, if if they're able, if that being Rise Nation, if they're able to win their refrags, win their gunfights, it's going to be, I think, difficult, not easy, for DG to successfully attack here. Exactly. I mean, I gotta give it to DG. Their early round attacks have been very successful. They've gotten their control of everything that they could possibly want and need. I think that they're just really struggling right now to close out the later rounds. I mean, you saw the server hold from the side of Rise Nation. They got, like you had mentioned, they, they had gotten that smoke pick, and that was only a minute and a half or a minute and 40 seconds into the round. So DG doing a really good job of clearing, getting the control. They just need to work on their executes. Rise, I think they really need to focus more on getting, not necessarily getting control, but kind of retaking and uh, giving up control, retaking, stalling more time. So now we're going to see a minute off the board. Spades on that front rappel, trying to apply that pressure for the players playing upstairs in Banana. Adam, you're going to see him putting down some bullet holes. So if players from DG push into the CEO office, he may be able to catch them off guard. England playing yeah. in the janitor's closet. He's going to he's gonna play a big role in Rise's defense. He is, and he hears action nearby. They will drone him out. He's kind of solo in there, but there is a rotate hole. I'm not sure if they've caught that he's actually laid down Ooh. in the back. And through the drone hole, some damage will be put down on him. About 25. He'll drop down, though. Back to the safety of the site and his teammates, only losing about a first. Oh, they want a shot from Adam onto Spades. He'll Kobe off the gold stairs and drill Spades. That'll be the Zofia off the board and a lot of utility done as well. One of the hatches will get open up as Thumbus will take out Beastly, finish him off with the pistol. Yeti will find one onto Adam. And so the rolls, or rather the, the numbers, the man count, will swap in the opposite direction. Still a minute left to go. Plenty of time for DG to make something happen. They even have enough time to actually drone in, even though that particular drone had been hijacked by the Mozzie. Yeah, I mean, just, I gotta, I gotta go back to that. I mean, Adam just hit him with the RKO out of nowhere from the top ropes. He just vaults over and absolutely deletes the Zofia into the Shadow Realm, but 33 seconds left on the clock. This is looking like a DG round again, but it is a 3v4. This is what I was talking about. They they get that control that they need, and then it seems like they're stalling. I, I think they really need to just start making moves, but we're actually going to see Thumbus holding this almost as if he's aware of the player blue stairs, but they are running low on time. Ass is going to get the pick onto Yeti. 3v3, a flurry of kills coming down from the side of DG. Cade going to pick up one. Can he clutch out this one v two? The diffuser is down. You're gonna see the IQ rushing in. He's taken down by the Cade, but disrupt, barely walking away. Oh, that that was what? just so close. One second, there had to have been one second left on the board. No, able there to was zero on the clock when that <laughs> oh happened. My lord, that could have not come down to the wire any closer. So don't forget, like when when one transitions to zero, you still technically have what. Like 59, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got 59 tenths of a second um, left to go, or 59 hundredths of a second, or whatever, right? A uh, uh, less than a second left to go, and that's all it took. 
for DG to steal that round away. We thought it was going to go the other way. But uh, no, and Yeti sitting atop the pile. But look at the team. We talked about this earlier, right? We talked about the team struggling Defender, a little bit. Um, there was like one or two that. players on Disrupt Gaming that had a lot of kills and everybody else was really struggling. And when Rise managed to chain those couple of rounds together, that round, that kill count kind of stabilized across the board. Everybody was putting in work. Now that's flipped on its head. Now Disrupt has found all their players have been doing their job. And that's what we really like to see. And unfortunately... For the viewers who are maybe rooting for one team or the other, whenever both teams are doing it like that, that's when we typically see ties, right? There's only a one round uh, differential going into round 10. So a tie is still a very good possibility. Will one of these teams find what it takes to chain two together before they go back to the back and forth? Because that's all it's going to take. And if DG happen to chain two together, they can win it out right here, right now, seven to four, and then play them again, of course, in a best of one immediately after. Yeah, I mean, whew, what a round. Like you, I mean, like you said, there was zero seconds left on the board. You almost saw the Kaid able to close that out, but DG taking that round by the end of their chinny, chin, chin. 30 seconds already into the round. I really want to see Rise stall more time. I mean, this has been the story of this match. It seems like both of these teams are really struggling to stall the time that they need. Last time we saw Vandal here on the blue stairs as smoke, he was picked very, very early. You saw Yeti kind of swing while Vandal had a, a smoke canister in his hands and get that pick, and that was such a huge pick. But if you recall in the same round, you act we actually saw Rise close it out. Beastly was left in a 1v2 and managed to give the Zofia the moves and he's able to close out that round just barely for Rise. So, I mean, DG is doing a really good job of, of getting that early control, but their late round is pretty poor. And Rise seems to, like they're they're having an issue just stalling the time that they need. You're already gonna see two smokes, smokes off the board right here. The nade getting caught by an ADS and you're gonna see both nades off the board. That's, that's really tragic, actually. It's gonna make it a lot hard, or a, uh -oh. a lot harder, excuse me for them to cl clear out those blue stairs. And Thumbus will botch one of the EMPs and the smoke will do a lot of damage to Yeti trying to get in to throw the grenade. So unlike what we saw last time where they didn't have much trouble at all, the spatching of Vandal, this time Vandal's holding his own and he'll find a kill onto Yeti. The refrag will come immediately back out. So the smoke's off the board, but he has wasted two minutes. And of course it stinks to, to lose the smoke. Oh. And oh no, just a wrong place, wrong time. England will get distracted by the hatch getting open, and Thumbus will catch him looking the other way. And just like that, DG now back into their favor. But they've had this kind of situation before where the time was running out, and you have somebody strategically placed on the side of Rise Nation able to clutch it out. We still see Acid on that long angle. He found success with the last time with the Alda and the ACOG. And uh, DG is going to have to contend with that angle that did so much work for him last time. Adapted Rainbow Diffuser in hand will point out the evil eye ready and waiting for him to the take a on. shot at diffusing. There is still a C4, actually two rather, on the side of an oh, oh. no. A TK from Thumbus as Acid is firing shots towards him with the Alda will bring the man count even. And just like that, Acid will find technically two, I guess you could give him credit for, onto Reed. And uh, Adam will find one of his own on the spades. Just like that, it's a 3v1. He'll find one, Thumbus, but gets shut down by Acid. Doing a lot of work that round with the Alda on that long angle. See how much you can see from that angle. That's why it's so strong. And you know what's funny is, is I think they actually caught Acid uh, coming from a, you know, from a garage flank the last time the Disrupt attacked downstairs, but not this time. Disrupt, or rather Rise, will tie it right back up. That was... That that was a DG round, man. I mean, they had the control of everything they needed, but you actually saw the TK come out, and I really think that was the turning point of the round. They had man advantage. They had everything they could possibly want. And when that TK went down, you saw the player that was mainstairs. I believe it was the Maverick. You saw him kind of trying to apply that pressure onto the Maestro, but when that TK went down, you saw him rotate. And the reason being is because they need that pressure from the hatches. Had that TK not gone down, not gone down, that could have potentially been a DG round. But Rise closing it out, you see Acid with those just long and powerful angles in Garage. Beautiful round from Acid.
Yeah, yes indeed. I think if we got it prepped, I'd like to look at the beautiful graphic that Blonde Bond, our producer tonight, has prepared showing the round count. And we can see that it's not necessarily been all night long a back and forth affair. This team, especially Rise Nation, two separate times able to chain a couple in a row. No, I guess that's Disrupt in this, uh, in this time around. So two separate times able to chain two together. Rise Nation somehow battling it out, staying back in it. And uh, just like that, like I said, these two teams, I don't think a tie would surprise any of us, but right now is kind of crunch time. Whatever team wins this round, the worst they can do is tie. They'll spot somebody working that open area. That'll be England on the Jaeger, but he will spot the drone spotting him. Take it out. Still two and a half left to play. Yeah, like you said, I mean, whenever, whenever one team does something, it seems like the other team answers right back. You saw kind of like a one, two, two, one, one, two, two sort of round count. Sorry, that might be a little bit too many rounds, but you get the point. We're going to see one, two, another... Kangaroo. <laughs> You're going to see the side of Rise Nation elect to go back upstairs. England back downstairs like we saw him last time, but last time, if you remember correctly, Yeti shot him through the window very, very early into the round, but England going to be stalling much more, playing his life and stalling more time. We are going to see the Nomad come out. We haven't seen the Nomad all game. This is the first time we were kind of saying earlier how we were going to see pretty much the same lineups all game, and we may see one operator kind of thrown in the mix if the attacker side feels like it's going to help them a bit more. So we do see the Nomad come out for the side of DG. Yeah, and oh no, from the lobby, Vandal will catch Thumbus repelling on that window, and I'm not sure how DG managed to miss somebody like the Doc in that. Oh, oh what a shot! Vandal will find somebody in ATMs, and he is just running lobby like it's going out of style. And DG now down two people. Angle will find one, make that three. Yeti will refrag one back Ooh. at night. Poor Beastly in janitors. He'll find a third. Yeti trying to bring it back. It won't be enough. Vandal will shut him down. The man who started it all with the dock. And what an exciting round that was. I mean, that was just the, the battle of Vandal and Yeti. I mean, Vandal just absolutely obliterates the player in ATMs just through a pixel peek. I mean, I really don't know how DG let him do that in the first place. I mean, standard, right? You, you have the player on the North Repel. You need a player holding his lobby. And it's just, I, I mean, I hate to say it because they're not amateur players, but it's such an amateur mistake. You don't want to see out of the side of DG. So you see Vandal get the player on the North Repel, absolutely obliterate ATMs and close out the round onto Yeti. But we got to give Yeti props. I mean, he just ran in there like John Wick and deleted some people. He gave the Mozzie the crouching <laughs> okay, tiger. He crouched underneath him and meleeed him. He slams the player sitting on the bomb. But I mean, Yeti had an absolute mountain to climb and could not climb it. Yep, unfortunate for him and for DG that he wasn't able to close it out. But, again, now that Ryze is on, on match point, the worst they can do is tie. So the best that DG can hope to do in this best of one, don't forget they are going to play another best of one against Ryze immediately after this. But the best they can hope to do in this map is accumulate one point. If they don't win this round, they will accumulate zero, and Ryze will pick up a much-needed three points for the win. You and definitely don't. A little bit of, of uh, siege we've seen so far. And this is the same site that they were just defending, I believe. What site were they just defending? They were just defending the top floor, yes. Well, then that's that can't be right, right? Because then they couldn't go back there. Unless I'm um, crazy for some reason. Oh, it's because they're playing up top. And we're me and you are just not paying attention to where the bombs are placed. Oh, they well, are going to be yeah. in the open area. But yeah, the they are defending. Yes, yeah. Exactly. But the 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 hold that they're doing is a very, very similar hold where they're going to have the roam up top. And the players are located up top. So that's kind of why it looked like that. Our mistake. However, we are going to see them go to open area. And like Chris was saying, rise. At least clinching themselves one point here. But... 
if you're either of these teams, you do not want these ties. I mean, at this point, no. DG has no other option. They, they, I mean, their only other option is to lose, but they don't want to do that. They want to at least clinch this one point because it's the best they can do. But if you're on the side of Rise, you want this win. You are playing for this win. If both of these teams continue to keep tying, they're really not going to find their way to the top two spots. So I would like to see both of these teams oh. kind of play for the win. Yeti with the absolute... Flick onto Adam. I mean, that was just a gunfight. He really shouldn't have won, but wow, beautiful play by Yeti to to get that frag, getting them the advantage that they need in this round number 12. He just dove under the bullets, 180'd, and domed Adam. That was so sick. I mean, after this game, I am just dubbing Yeti, the crouching tiger. He's crouching under everything, and it's working. How do you win that fight? Wow, DG needed to, let me just tell you. And listen, they're not out of it yet. And and you said earlier, well, their they're, they're only option is to tie. No, never mind, they could lose too. Not if you ask DG. And uh, Yeti kind of proved that with his play. They're gonna go for it full force here coming up. The wall will get open. Vandal in a very dangerous oh. spot. Oh, actually trying to trick it, but he'll miss and run away confident that the trick would actually go off. Was just standing there and uh, thankfully, None of the attackers were kind of ADS down, waiting to kill somebody once that hole opened up. So he will barely escape with his life. Beasley with the kill onto Spades. That's a Zofia gone. She had a lot of health too, and that ACOG on that gun to work with, but only 36 seconds left now. Some of the defenders in some comfortable spots, able to work on that, that uh, evil eye camera. DG a little bit on the stalled side. We have one go around and wrap over towards Kitchen. Black Guy bringing the intel for the defense from that side of the map as well. BC will find his second of the round. 4v3 now. DG running out of time and men really quickly. The diffuser will begin to go down, but get pulled up on. BC, he'll find a third now as somebody will go down. Acid will add to the kill count and England will finish it off. And Rise Nation, after going toe to toe with DG all map long, will somehow sneak away with the outright win and garner themselves their first best of one win of the season so far and a precious three points if you're dg uh i mean you just need to to close out these rounds right we saw so many we saw so many rounds just just DG had the advantage and they threw them away. I mean, throwback to the round. It was very early in the game where Rise is on defense. They're they're holding server. They get that advantage when they pick the smoke so early on the blue stairs. And I mean, later on in the round, you see Acid pick up a one or two with that long angle in garage, but then you see